it is time to get started with the exercises uh, in the course. This demo is for uh, the courses uh, in client-side JavaScript, could be the 1DV525 or 1DV022. Uh, um, so whichever course you are uh, taking, uh, the um, steps necessary should be uh, pretty much the same. Uh, the only thing to look out for is in this case I will demo for the 1DV525. If you are taking the 1DV022 you should re uh, replace uh, those texts with uh, with your course code. Um, uh, but on your course webpage you will find exercise uh, um, uh, document and the links are correct for you in that document. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, the exercises, you will store the exercises in the course, or first of all the exercises in the course are really really important to be able to do the uh, examination uh, assignments uh, in a good way, uh, because those exercises are, are kind of leading up to the examination uh, assignment, so please go ahead and do the exercises. Uh, I recommend for uh, 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 all of you to do the A and B level uh, exercises, um, up to in this case the memory game. We might add uh, C level and more uh, A and B exercises as we go. Um, but we will start off by doing these tiny tunes. This is a good in introduction uh, to, to s make everything set up and work uh, as, as, as you should, uh, uh, as you desire. Um, so first of all, we you ha will have a uh, um, GitHub repository on the course uh, organization on GitHub. So visit the course organization on GitHub. Uh, in my case, it's 1DV525. I find that I have a TSTU student uh, exercise in this case. You will find your username uh, uh, and exercises. Uh, if you will, if you if you can't find any exercises in this uh, uh, organization, you just have to wait. They haven't been uh, um, uh, created yet. Uh, also, make sure that you don't have an invitation up here, because if you have an invitation, you should accept the invitation so that we could. Uh, add you to, to your repositories. You can also note that this one is private, so what you do in this one is only seen by, by you and the course management. And this is really good because if you have a question, you could always commit your code and post a question to one of us and we are able to see and reason about your code on GitHub. Um, okay, first of all you need to clone this to your local computer. So enter the library, you'll see that it's empty and in your case you will have the HTTPS method of cloning, so this address. In my case I have SSH keys on, keys on my computer so I use the SSH uh, uh, version instead, but it's the same uh, same thing to do. Then you enter uh, 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 you, you open a ter terminal window, I will make this a little bit bigger, and then we do a git git clone and the address. No, sorry. Um, in this case I will do 1dv525 folder first, so I don't have it in my uh, root folder. Uh, so I make 1dv525 and then I do a git clone uh, like this, and you will get a, the TSTU student exercises. Um, enter that library and the now or, or directory and now you see that in my case this is handled on the git uh, and we are in the master branch so everything is, is fine. Uh, next, next thing to do is to add a boilerplate to this repository. Uh, so we have prepared a boilerplate. Uh, you find this one as well in your uh, organization. Uh, in this case it's called exercise boilerplate. Um, you do uh, more or less the same thing. You copy this address, but instead of, of, of cloning, you do not do not want to clone uh, one repo inside of another Git repo, but we could do a pull, and what that will do is just merge changes from, from this boilerplate into our existing uh, repository. So we do git pull, and uh, this exercise boilerplate. You will find this exact command as the second one in, uh, in the guide as well. So just copy and paste that if you like. Okay, done. 
Uh, if we do a, a ls minus a, we will see that we have the git ignore file, and this git ignore I will show you this soon. This git uh, git folder is just store directory is, is is here. It's git's way of knowing that this uh, this directory is under uh, uh, version uh, is is version controlled. Next thing uh, you might want to do is to install an editor. In my case, I will use Visual Studio Code. I've installed it and I made it shorthand so I can just write code dot. You could just start the editor and uh, you're good to go, but I will do the code dot. So it will start the editor for me and I will be in the right uh, exercise uh, uh, directory. A good thing in this one as well is that you have an integrated terminal. So we open the terminal and that will like make it so we don't need to use this one, we could use the internal one instead. Uh, so everything's in one place. Okay, let's have a look in the git ignore. So this file is just here to tell us or tell git which files that should not be handled by the version control system or by git. And there are a lot of files, uh, you don't need to care about them. Just note that we have this node modules, and node modules will be installed, uh, or all the dependencies that we need for the exercises will be install, installed in the node modules. And we really, really never want to do uh, version control node modules folder. Uh, so you can just leave the git ignore as it is, or modify it, or use this tool that we used, git ignore.io, to, to, uh, to get a git ignore file that suits you. Okay, close that one. Okay, but uh, so you're good to go. You could just start off by 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 creating uh, JavaScript and uh, index file, uh, HTML files in this folder if you like. However, we have structured this for you so that every exercise has its own library with dependencies and uh, boilerplate files ready for you. Uh, so let's have a look at that. We will start off by the tiny tunes exercise. Uh, in that case, you just copy this command. Um, more or less. In my case, I need to do one modification though. So it's the tiny tunes. I need the SSH um, address instead of, of, of the HTTP. So I will just go ahead and change this one. You shouldn't need to do this. Okay. What this does is it takes uh, all the files inside of this tiny tunes repo uh, or this actually tiny tunes repository and squeezes them down into a commit in inside of uh, uh, our tstu exercises uh, so you'll see that all of the files are in the folder tiny tunes and the folder is this one the prefix um, and if you have a look inside, we have a webpack configuration file. You could go ahead and look in it if you like. This is to to tell, basically tell uh, where to to produce built files and uh, how to reach those and where on which port to start to the internal web server. I will uh, show you more of this soon. We have a package JSON, and in this package JSON you will find the dependencies for this exercise. Uh, those dependencies are, are dev dependencies in this case. We don't have any dependencies for the live code, but we have dependencies during the development process. Uh, for instance, we have the webpack dev server that is the uh, uh, web server that we will use. You could write your code and just double click on the index file and start it in locally in your web browser. However, when we uh, later in the course, when we use things like WebSockets, we need to have those pages served over HTTP, and, and, and this Webpack dev server will help us with that. Um, to be able to install those dependencies, you run the command npm install, and, and this command will look inside of the package JSON and install all the dependencies uh, that are uh, 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 listed here. So go ahead and do that. Uh, no. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, of course. I need to. There is no package file in 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 the root folder. Uh, so we need to enter tiny tunes. npm install. We got. Looks like we got an empty node module. So we can remove that one as well. <coughs> uh, this could take a couple of minutes, depending on your internet connection. Uh, so. If you have a look uh, inside of this node modules folder, you will find that, uh, I mean, it's not only these dependencies that are being installed, because those 
like the Webpack dev server will have dependencies of their own. And those dependencies will have other dependencies and so on and so on and so on. So you will see that it's a lot of dependencies being installed when you're doing an NPN, uh, uh, NPN install like this. Uh, uh, this is why you really don't want to, to to version control or put this one on GitHub because it's a lot of code, which is not something that is needed for your, it's needed for your project. But I mean, everything is uh, specified here uh, what the dependencies are. So don't check in the node modules folder. And you will see if I do a git status. Since I have this git ignore file, git knows that okay, this one should not be 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 handled by git. Great. Uh, when we're done the npm install, we can do an npm <coughs> run uh, start. If if you have a look down in the uh, on the scripts in the package JSON, you will find the command start, and that will start up the web pack dev server. So if I write npm start, this script will be, be executed. You could also, uh, and, and start is actually shorthand, you could write run start, but just but the start keyword has a shorthand in that you don't need to, to, to write run. Uh, however, if you want to run the debug, in this case it doesn't do anything else, but then you need to write npm run debug. Uh, later on you will see that we might have dist uh, or build scripts uh, that you need to run, but more on that later. npm start. This will run the webpack dev server. Uh, you will see that it is being started and hosted and at localhost. Uh, uh, you could just, oh come on, click. Okay. Uh, start it localhost and you will find uh, uh, the page running here and that page is being served from the source folder and it's this index file that you're seeing so just go ahead if i change something in let's say good reading adding a smiley saving uh, in this case it might not have reloaded no, so I need to reload the page. However, when it comes to JavaScript, if I uh, edit this uh, app.js, you don't need strict now, I think. So if I edit this one, adding a smiley there, save, you will see that it recompiles recomp this, this file and uh, serves it to the output. Uh, so if we run the inspector, and go to console, you will see the hello world with a smiley. So if I instead change that back to hello world, save, goes back, you see that it reloads and now you're running hello world again. So when you're saving an JS file, you don't need to refresh the page, uh, basically. If I make an error, I add a semicolon, which uh, in the standard JS um, file that we're using is not allowed. If I save, you will get an error saying extra semicolon on 130. So this one basically. Uh, I mean, it's a warning, uh, so it will not, oh, it says error here, but it's a warning. Uh, so since it's a warning, everything's running, so it will still work. However, you will get those error messages on the client as well. Uh, you will probably, uh, like I do, do a lot of errors in your code because it's quite I, I I'm having a hard time not inserting a semicolon after I write a line because that's like in burnt into my fingers more or less uh, so and, and you will probably do this as well um, however there uh, is a fix f uh, if you do not want to do this by yourself you could always open another terminal and enter the tiny tunes library and do a standard fix. So if I run this one, it will go through uh, all the dependencies and fix them for me. Uh, that's qu pr pretty neat. Uh, however, uh, if you're using uh, Visual Studio uh, code, uh, we could close that terminal uh, and we could instead install a plugin called standard JS standard or JavaScript standard style. We install it, we reload, loads the window. Uh, now, if I make an error, it will be uh, uh, said that okay, uh, on the, okay, in this case, let's do it like this. 
and it says uh -uh, strings must use single quotes. Um, if you as well uh, uh, enter the settings and search for standard, you will find that a bit further down you have this auto fix on save. It's now set to false. If we add this set this to true instead, oh we will have the user defined up here. Set it to true, save, close the settings. Uh, if I save this file, uh, standard will fix it for me. So it will automatically fix all the errors. Uh, and it will do that hopefully. Let's see. Oh, I closed the terminal of course. There was an error start. No, uh, tiny tunes and pin start. Let's see if I add a semicolon save, it will change this one before the webpack even notices that that it was a fault. So so that's pretty neat. Um, that is pretty much it. Now we could just start writing our code, watch uh, what happens in the browser. Uh, so if we like, we could do things like adding a uh, to do dot js um, um, and we could in, in this file we could do like a require um, see um, to do save uh, it will compile it compiled the app.js and the dependency to do.js and those are now compiled together so so by by this we could could support modules in the browser even though the browser doesn't support it because what happens is that uh, those files will be tucked together <coughs> uh, in in one big file uh, called build.js so this is pretty much uh, in my code if we like search for hello you will find our code being executed uh, in an eval. That's ugly, but hey, it's for development purposes in this case. Uh, if we build this code later on, <coughs> it will not look like this. Um, however, it could be really hard to debug in this <coughs> since you have those eval, eval statements. So if we want to debug, if we want to stop the debugger here, we could do debugger like that, save, I thought, statement no debugger let's see oh well it worked so okay we get an error but it worked uh, now you'll see that oh it actually this looks like our file but it's a webpack footer what is this so this is the source mapping because webpack has we have enabled source mapping in webpack so that it will actually tell the browser in which line the debugger stopped and, and will sync this so that we will get a nice view. Okay, so it's in the app.js on the second line and we can match this to, to our uh, uh, working environment. I wonder if, no, debugger. Yeah, I, I, I'm not really sure uh, how to fix this one uh, so we don't get an error, but it could be quite good to have an error so we don't forget a debugger statement anywhere in our code. Uh, so that's the easiest way of, of to stop the debugger. You could also find your files like, uh, let's see, where is it? Doesn't look, uh, we've used Browserify before, and this doesn't look like it does in Browserify. Maybe we find it here. Yeah. So there it is. So in Webpack Source JS, yeah, yeah, and you can find the file. Reload once again. Dot source app.js and you can like stop the debugger here manually if you like but uh, it's pretty neat to just write debugger and and, and 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 it stops like that okay um if you uh when 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 you've done this you could always open one more term terminal window and in this one you can have git status oh changes are being made we could add those changes and we could do a git commit um, adding to do um, and push this to github so going back to github uh, here it is you will find your files adding to do and everything is in sync 
Um, of course, there is as well if we do a change. No, um, copy that one and do it again. Um, you will find that Visual Studio Code have, has a built-in uh, Git uh, co uh, Git tool. So we could add this file app.js to state changes. We could write our commit message here. Um, blah, 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 blah. Adding uh, another, another um, console log and just press that one. And maybe we could do a git push as well. I haven't tried that. Yeah, push. Reload. Yeah, adding another console log. So, so you could use whatever you like. Uh, I tend to always use the command line because as the uh, uh, editor change, you have like different ways of doing things. And I think the command line in most cases is the quickest one actually. But but you're free to do what you like. So when I've when I'm done with this as uh, as assignment, I just make a control C. I, I stop the web server. Uh, I change directory. I do a git subtree. So I'm going back here, copying this command. But instead of doing the tiny tunes, I could actually do this. Uh, we could change this to Elenuit, which is the next one. Um, fetch that one. Uh, you will find that uh, if we go back to the files, you have another uh, uh, folder called Elenuit. You enter Elenuit, you do an npm install, um, do install all dependencies for this exercise, and so on and so on. It could you could feel that oh, it's a lot of work. Why couldn't we just do an npm install for all of the exercises? Well, we could. However, as you will find some of uh, the later exercises will have dependencies like we have an uh, which is not showing here but we have an autocomplete demo where we have a server as well so with different dependencies and uh, this is pretty much a good practice for you in, in in the following courses to 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 have this model of okay we're getting the code we're doing an npm install and we're running this that's it so it's a, it's a it's a closed environment for, for each exercise. So I hope you found this useful and that you could uh, start working on your code right now. I would just like to mention that in some of the demos, uh, you will probably see things like Vagrant. You could just ignore those. This is the simple uh, workflow for this year. Uh, however, the code, I mean, even though I write code with semi semicolons and stuff, I mean, the, the, the logic in the code is the same. So you, you just have to watch beyond uh, those semicolons and, and, and the syntax. Um, if you like, you're free to use Vagrant. If you like, you're free to use Docker if you would like to virtualize stuff. Uh, however, uh, we have back down from doing that just because Vagrant was a hazard on Windows. We will probably utilize Docker in, in, in the years to come. So if you like to try out Docker, please go ahead. Okay, good luck with the exercises.